Ladies and gentlemen, with us this evening, the only Calypsonian in the world to win Calypso King in Trinidad and Tobago for four consecutive years. Put your hands together, make some noise, and help me to welcome the mighty, mighty Duke. It feels good standing up here, at least I know I'm taller than you when I'm up. <laughs> Come on up on stage and have a seat. Thank you. Listen, man, thanks for coming back. Well, it's my pleasure, it really is, to be a guest on your show. Brilliant. You are nicknamed, I know Trinidadians have a habit of giving people a lot of nicknames, and you have quite a few. People call you Mr. Versatility. Tell me what it is that inspired people to give you that particular nickname. Well, um, because I do calypsos, I do party songs, I do reggae, I do every every aspect of the thing, you know, that's why I guess. Mr. Versatility. I guess that's speaks why. for itself. I guess that's why. Take me back to the early days. Um, when you won Calypso King for the first time, take me back to that experience and tell wow, me. Wow, that's true. That's to the 60s, you know, that's over 1968, uh, 69, 70, and 71. Mm, that's quite a feat, and like I said before, no one else has done no, this. No, no. Now yes. people no. call Sparrow the Calypso King of the world, but in my book, <laughs> this is King. <laughs> this is King. That was enough. That was enough. This is King. That was enough. Not even Sparrow was able to do that. Thank you, thank you. I know I'll probably have a hard time getting, getting him on a show after that statement. I know, I hear him, sir. I hear him, sir. All right. So, um, take me back to your writing. Who, who writes you? Well, thank God, um, everything that I've sung so far, everything that I've recorded, and I've been recording since in the 60s, I've done for myself. I've never, well, I was fortunate to do any material by anyone else, because um, you know, I've never had, no, no one gave me material that I liked or whatever, you know. What's your all-time favorite tune that you've done so far? Oh boy, that's a lot of, how many more must die? Black is beautiful, teach the children. Oh, that's a to some of the other songs. I beg your pardon? Why these particular songs? Uh, uh, I guess because of um, um, consciousness. I guess that's one reason I'm a very conscious person. Do you tend to lean more towards conscious music as opposed to party song, the jump and whine and not really. Um, I do I do that for me. But then again, when you do an album, you have to please not only just yourself, but you got to please everyone. So uh, that's why they call again, I'm, I'm calling Mr. Bustity, because I do everything. I do party songs, I do the serious ones, I do the humorous ones, and, you know, you name them. Where did you get your inspiration? Life, life, New York, Caribbean, anywhere you go. There's so much you can look out there. As a matter of fact, I was sitting out there a while ago and uh, a beautiful idea came to me. A beautiful idea of a song. Would you believe that? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to keep it in my head to get home and start working with it. I, un I understand that as a writer because really? I write songs to myself and sometimes I may be driving and I have to pull, pull across to the side of the street and yeah. write it down because I am a firm believer that inspiration comes into the universe that's right. Sort of comes to everyone, and if you do nothing about it, it sort of like slip away. Yeah. So at that point in time, I you capture. It. Yeah, I capture it and put those notes down. Mm -hmm. You know, who in your early days, who did you sort of look up to? Who did you admire most? Well, um, to be quite honest, when I started, um, Sparrow was my idol, Sparrow. But um, as I grew more in the business, I got to understand that the, how how difficult it is, and therefore I gave Kitchener. The, all the, the laurels because I don't think the world would ever see, ever see again an, uh, a Calypsonian like the great Lord Kitchener. That was then and also now. Then and now. He's in the 70s and he's still one of the very, very best. Mm -hmm. Today, a lot of um, artists seem to be um, crossing over. How, how have you managed to sort of stay on track and still please the public? Well, uh, you see, they have, some artists have the idea that if you, you've got to do things that you think people will like before you do things that you think you will like, 
that sort of thing, you know. And uh, it has to come from in here. You've got to feel something, not try to get something that you don't feel. And if you feel it, you do it. Um, the only thing about crossing over is that when you cross over, you've got could, you could, you to cross back. Because you've got to be home sometimes. But that's the only difference about it. But I, I, I stay with um, my music. I try to do it the best I can, and that's about it. You seem to have such a passion for Calypso music. Oh, yeah. Tell me, what, what does Calypso mean to you? As a matter of fact, um, the, the first song I won the Calypso Monarch with was the Calypso King in those days. was called, What is Calypso? You know, I, I, the song, I remember the lyrics, it went like, oh. It is a feeling which comes from deep within. That's the lyrics. It's a tale of joy sadness and suffering it's an editorial in the song of the life that we undergo that and only that i know is true kind of yes what, what types of music you listen to on your spirit when you reach home and you finish what, what, what do you do i listen to anything i did that's on the radio anything I listen to uh, bass, I listen to reggae, rock, you name it. I, I love music, you know, and um, you can, you can, you see, you may hear something, hear a rock tune, but I will hear something else in that same tune that you haven't heard. So I listen to everything, and that's why, you know, I love music in general. Okay, you did, a, a, was it a Broadway or off-Broadway show sometime by the name of Ambalika? Ambakaila. Ambakaila, yes. yes. Uh, take me back to that. Uh, oh, that's what, that's what I wanted to do. Good about thing I've done so far. It's, um, uh, it was uh, a whole potpourri of Calyp uh, Caribbean thing. It was um, not, not just Calypsos, but um, folk, music, steam band, uh, Indian, because you know, Trinidad is a very, you know, cosmopolitan society. Uh, we had Indian music, Indian dance, Indian dancing. It was it was a whole potpourri. It was a like a, like a roti, not a roti, yeah, right? Come yeah. on, man. Curry and so on, everything mixed up in one. It was beautiful, mm -hmm. really. Okay, I I like to cover one one more point before we leave. This music industry tends to be a a dog eat dog kind of world. How do you manage to survive, and still keep your dignity and your respect? Well, first, if you respect yourself, you won't be a dog. <laughs> That's about it. And um, I have the crazy more respect for myself. I respect other people. I respect people in general. So um, that's about it. And you stay you. Once you stay you, that's it. You don't you know, go into your door or leave your way. One final point. Thank you. What is your greatest achievement? Ha! Huh. Life. Life and looking and feeling healthy and uh, well and my kids. Kids. As you mentioned that, I forget, I have to bring up something, you know, being born and, and raised in Trinidad like myself. You know, I would expect a gentleman like you to be still eating cornmeal porridge, and, but your kids tell me that you, you eat all their Wheaties in the morning. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I want to get back young again, that's why. Here you have it, Mr. Kendall Cole. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.